All right, what's going on everyone on YouTube? I'm the Schooler. Welcome to a brand new DVD and Blu-ray update. Uh, got some stuff to show you guys for the month of, I guess, October and November. It's been a little bit since I've done one of these, so uh, most of the stuff that you will be seeing here are stuff that I received in the mail for to review from different people, and um, you'll probably see separate videos for most of the stuff, but I still like to talk about it in my update. If, uh, you guys don't watch my reviews, and you just watch my updates, so... Uh, most of the stuff, or some of the stuff I still have to get around to watching, because I just got, or... I've just been really busy, so... But, um, stay tuned for the reviews on the channel coming up. So first, uh, we have a film from the year 1980 that I've actually been curious to check out for a long while now, and it finally came out here in the States, in Region 1. Um, it's been released, uh, Region 2, by Arrow, so... Finally cool to have a release. Um, I just got this so I haven't had time to check it out yet, but it's one that I've been, like I said, curious about. And that is Forbidden Zone. This is released by MVD. Uh, it's supposed to be a really strange and bizarre um, musical. Um, seems really, really weird in, in my type of film. Uh, you know me, I love my weird, strange, bizarre um, cinema. So this is, I'm very curious about. Like I said, I just got it, so I have to still check it out, but uh, Forbidden Zone, released by MVD. So stay tuned for a review on this one um, coming soon. I might do a written review, I might do a video review, I haven't decided yet, but stay tuned for that. Forbidden Zone, released by MVD from the year 1980. Now, this is one I haven't got around to watch yet, but I will pretty soon. This will probably be in the next one I watch. That's uh, Phase 4. Uh, this was sent to me by Olive from the year 1973. Uh, this is supposed to be like a weird killer ant type of a film, which is which is strange, um, like I said, from 1973. So it's quite quite an older film. So I'm curious about this one, released by Paramount, uh, Paramount and Olive. So we'll see about this one. Um, stay tuned for a review on this one soon, probably next week. So Phase 4, released by Olive. Next up we have Roar. This was a co-release from Draft House and Olive. Um, this movie has been in the works to get released here for a long time from the year 1981. Uh, no, this movie has a quite a deep history of um, in the cinematic world of using live and wild animals. So um, definitely, I've already watched this, so I'll be doing a written review on this one. I think that's the type of uh, review this kind of film deserves simply because of the history aspect behind it, so um, stay tuned on the uh, 22 Shots of Moods and Horror website for a review, on a written review on this film. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is a uh, Draft House Olive co-release. Um, like I said, interesting, an interesting film, but I'll be talking about it more in my written review. Um, it's not the best film, to be honest, but it's definitely an, an interesting and a very unique film, so uh, that's Roar. Now, if you guys remember a few months back, I did a top five films that I wish got released on DVD or Blu-ray that weren't previously released, and this is one film that I had on that list. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this film, uh, go over and check out that video, but uh, strange enough, got a release here in the States by Olive again, and that is the Amicus Anthology film, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors from the year 1964. Starring Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Donald Sutherland, and Roy Castle. Really, really great um, early amicus anthology film about uh, six passengers on a train. And there's a fortune teller played by Christopher Lee who um, gives each person their fortune. And uh, that person's fortune leads into a story of this anthology film. And it's really, really interesting. You've got some, uh, some good... Um, stories here, um, a werewolf short, and voodoo short, and a vampire movie short, a whole bunch of really interesting um, genre type of shorts in here, and uh, for um, a film from 1964, it's actually really, really solid, and I highly, highly recommend you guys pick this one up if you like um, anthology films and amicus films, because this one's really good. Picture quality on this is really, really solid. Um, there's no special features on this, unfortunately. But um, really, really cool to finally see Olive 
put out a release of this film considering it's never had a chance to see the light of day here in the states so very very cool dr terror's house of horrors um sweet Uh, next we have Charlie's Farm. I, I picked this one up myself at Walmart. Um, this film is from 2015. Uh, it's, supposed to, it's been getting a lot of... Well, it's from 2014, but it got released here. Sorry, in 2015. That's my phone. It's gotten a lot of um, interesting buzz um, here, in the, here in the horror community. So uh, I definitely wanted to pick this one up. I, I said, I had, that's, how no, that's how you know how busy I am. I haven't even fucking opened this yet, which is um, not typical of me. But... Um, Charlie's Farm, uh, it's supposed to be a really, really solid slasher film with Kane Hodder and Tara Reid. <laughs> so I'm very excited to check this one out. I'll definitely get to it before the end of the year show on the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast, so stay tuned to that. But Charlie's Farm, yeah, I'm, I'm curious about this one. I, I've actually paid something for full price, so we'll see. All right, next film comes from a sweet fan on the Facebook page, Luis, he sent me this just out of the generosity of his heart because he's a cool cat. Very, very awesome um, that he sent me this. And thank you again. You're, we have the best fans on the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror Facebook page. So thank you so much for sending me this. Really, really awesome. That is the Draft House Blu-ray release of Miss 45. Yeah, really, really fantastic, fantastic great revenge film. Probably one of the Probably the best rape revenge film, um, in my opinion. Some really, really interesting um, genre roles going on in this film, as you, you typically expect from uh, rape revenge films. But if you guys know me, know a little bit about my background, about how I like uh, uh, genre, gender roles in, in horror films, that's basically a huge focus that I like to study when I do my film analysis is gender roles in, in horror films. And this movie definitely makes it pretty pretty interesting statement so if you guys haven't seen Miss 45 check it out it's really really solid and they, I highly recommend it really nice release <coughs> from Draft House comes with this nice booklet really really nice so thank you again buddy you guys are the best and um thanks this is a really really fantastic uh, addition to the collection I picked up Argento's The Cat of Nine Tails. This is the Anchor Bay, old Anchor Bay release. Uh, I did we did an Argento show this month on the Twenty Two Shots of Moods and Horror for uh, Italian Month, all November. Uh, each week we're doing a different Italian director, and the first week was Argento. So uh, if you guys want to hear my thoughts on this film, go over to the Twenty Two Shots of Moods and Horror website and listen to the Argento show. Uh, overall, this movie's okay. It's 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 okay. I I liked it for what it was. Seeing how I'm doing on time. Okay. Next up, we have Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, I picked this one up uh, at Walmart. Uh, yeah, it's the documentary on Canon. Can't wait to watch this one. I love my documentaries. So, uh, put out by Warner Brothers. Not much more to talk about. It's a documentary about Canon Films, so very, very cool to find this at Walmart for five bucks, so. Uh, next up, we have A Tale of Two Sisters. This is a really, really interesting uh, South Korean film. Uh, I did a lecture uh, every semester. One of my old professors lets me come in and give a lecture about a horror film, and uh, this time around, he says he was doing a, a unit on South Korean films. So he asked me if I wanted to pick out a good South Korean horror film to show, and I probably picked up, uh, I probably picked out the best example of uh, South Korean horror films, and that is a Tale of Two Sisters, a really, really strange and bizarre mind fuck of a movie. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to see this one, I highly recommend it. It's very strange, very bizarre. Um, definitely a film you have to watch multiple screenings to fully. Uh, grasp and understand, but it's a it's a really really well done and a, and a really really beautiful film as well. So, a tale two sisters recommend that one if you guys get a chance. Next up we have serial killer culture. Um, I actually picked this up at the uh, Music Box of Horrors twenty four hour horror marathon here in Chicago. Uh, there was a booth set up and I grabbed this for five bucks. Um, 
a documentary that I've heard about. So uh, I was I was excited to see it for five bucks. Um, this is about people who collect serial serial killer stuff. So really, really weird and bizarre. So I'm very excited to check this one out. But I have so much other stuff to, to watch. So um, probably will be a little bit till I get to this one. But for five bucks, had to grab it. Um, I'm excited to check that one out. Next up we have Rebel Scum. Um, I did a review on this, so if you guys want to hear my thoughts on this film, um, check out the review. I don't know if it's up here on the channel yet. I don't know what kind of order I'm going to post these videos, but I did a review on this one. Um, an interesting documentary about a southern rock band titled The Dirty Works and their front man, Christopher Scum. Uh, listen to my review if you guys want to hear more on this one. What am I doing with time? Nine minutes. Okay, I'm doing all right. Busting through this. Uh, we have Killer Workouts sent to me by Olive and Slasher Video. Um, listen to my review if you guys want to hear this one. Like I said, I, I don't know when, what order I'm going to post because I have a few of these, a few more videos that I have to post. But very strange, strange, strange film from the year 1986. That's all I have to say about this one. It's cheesy as all hell and it's it has some good gore and things like that. Uh, the transfer is eh, but... Um, not that many features on this release, unfortunate, but, um, it's an interesting, interesting cheese fest of a film. It's not good, but, um, it's, it's cheesy enough to get a watch for me if you guys find a chance to pick it up for cheap. So, killer workout. Stay tuned for my review on that one. Uh, next up we have Cinco de Mayo. Um... Just an absolute great film. Um, I did a review on this one. This is probably one of my last videos that I posted where was my review on um, three of these films. Pick up Cinco de Mayo if you guys get a chance. It's really, really good. Really well done. Um, it's not your typical low-budget film. Um, like I said in my review, it has a heart. It's really solid. Pick it up if you guys get a chance. I think you guys would really enjoy it. So Cinco de Mayo... Uh, same thing with this film, Trashology. Uh, if you guys like John Waters films and um, toilet humor, you'll definitely enjoy this film. Listen to my review if you want to hear my thoughts on this one. Um, but it's it's really, really funny, and um, it's good. Next we have Splatter, Architects of Fear. This is an interesting mockumentary um, following like this post-apocalyptic film getting made and um there's a there's a sort of a narrative about this uh effects guy working on this movie and he's a killer and he goes around killing the set the people on set um you learn some stuff it's not really that much of an informational documentary but there's a lot of good gore and nudity and everything else that goes into a good shot on video film so um i i probably wouldn't watch this one again to be honest but i think it's interesting for a one-time watch um, it's not that good, to be honest, but, um, eh. Next we have Cemetery Sisters. Uh, listen to my review on this one. Short film. Um, it's not good, but that's, that's the thing with these shot on video films. You never know what you're going to get, but this one, eh. And finally, we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This will probably be my next review that I post here on the channel. Um... Really, really well done film. Really, really solid acting about the Stanford Prison Experiment from 1971. Um, listen to my review if you guys want to hear more about this one. But it's really well done. Really well acted. Really nice cinematography, lighting, all that um, stuff. So if you guys get a chance, listen to my review on this one. I, I highly recommend this film. I think it's, I think it's really, really solid. And uh, this is out from IFC. So. So yeah, that's it everybody. I hope you guys liked this DVD and Blu-ray update. If you guys did, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash nesruler22. And as always, you can follow me on the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror website. 22 Shots of Moods and the I'll talk to you guys soon with some reviews. See you guys.